I'd like to welcome you to our second annual conference of the Banyan Nature Programme. Thanks very much for coming, but also thanks very much both to members of the coordination team and also our advisory group and from many of the projects and really kind of working with us to co-design this conference. Uh, and a lot of effort has gone into trying to make it a conference that's a little bit different. So uh, we, we will be handing out feedback forms at the end. <laughs> so let us know what you think of our efforts. So I'm going to uh, start off um, by introducing you to the programme. And, well, certainly for part of this, I apologise to half of the room. You've probably heard much of this about five times before already. Uh, and I'm doing it in the case there are a few people here who, who uh, are not so familiar with this. But, as you all know, the five-year programme, £7 million, pounds, quite a small programme, actually has a broad base of funders, although led um, by NERC funding, and our aim is to better understand and represent the complexities of the natural environment in valuation analyses and actually interpreting that word value in a, a broad sense to consider wider societal and cultural values as well. And this really builds on the first Valuing Nature Network, uh, which was led by Ian Bateman. And we have three goals. So I think NERC was was um, wise in investing in that first phase of the Valuing Nature Network because this is a very interdisciplinary area. I think it's also wise in actually putting aside some resource for us to really try and foster inter and transdisciplinary research capabilities. So the coordination team not only supports, facilitates and um, uh, tries to enhance the impact of the research projects in this programme, it also has a responsibility to the wider uh, network to continue to build capacity. Um, and we have two research themes, which are now all the projects have been chosen and are up and running. The human health and well-being theme, which, in which we have four projects, and the ecosystem stocks, stocks and tipping points theme, where we have three projects. And you'll be hearing or hearing from those projects or uh, seeing posters or other material from those projects in various guises um, over the next couple of days. But just to whiz through the kind of historical context, um, of course, in the early noughties, we had the Millennium Assessment, which was really the first um, clear and comprehensive articulation of the links between ecosystem ecosystems and human health and well-being. And then we were very lucky to have Bob Watson, who uh, was very involved in that assessment, to become DEFRA's chief scientific advisor, where he initiated the UK National Ecosystem Assessment. And actually many of you who were involved in the expert panel and in uh, contributing uh, to that assessment are here today. And there were about 500 authors. And that was very influential in the natural environment white paper that followed. And the conceptual framework that uh, really built on the Millennium Assessment framework uh, really sort of included, started to include humans as part of the system and that the way humans value the goods produced in the environment actually then feeds back through various social feedbacks into altering drivers for change. And Ken Norris, who led the biodiversity chapter for that assessment, um, sort of uh, draw, drew this slide as an illustration of some of his key conclusions, which really articulate some of the knowledge gaps. And this is really illustrating that we know quite a lot about the links between provisioning and regulating services and human health and well-being. Uh, but we don't know that much about biodiversity, the common elements of biodiversity that underpin those provisioning and regulating services in many instances. As far as cultural services are concerned, we do know quite a lot about uh, a key charismatic species that are valued in terms of cultural services, but much less about the links between cultural services and well-being and value. There is evidence that there are such links 
but we have much less understanding about the characteristics of the environment and those elements of biodiversity that really contribute to those links. <coughs> so, there are a number of emerging research challenges at the beginning of the decade, and I've sort of drawn out five examples here. How does biodiversity underpin the delivery of key ecosystem services? What are the tipping points in socio-ecological systems that are of greatest concern? How can we estimate different types of value and integrate them into decision making? Can we design multifunctional landscapes? And what characteristics of the natural environment deliver health and well-being benefits? So NERC's been very active um, and other partners, with other partners in this area. And there have been three research programs. BESS, which has recently come to an end, ESPA, which comes to an end in uh, next year, and the Valuing Nature Programme. <coughs> the Valuing Nature Programme is the smallest of these three programmes, but they are very complementary in trying to address some of these research gaps. Um, and we're very fortunate to have Georgina, who's been very uh, heavily involved in the ESPA programme, for example, to deliver our keynote this, um, this afternoon. <coughs> But I'd just like to give you a bit of an update about what the program coordination team have been doing, uh, particularly in that, that first task of trying to foster an inter- and transdisciplinary research capabilities. And here's the team you probably have uh, know um, or have met or have worked with, a number of them. We have Eche, um, an economist. We have Michael Winter and Rob Fish, who between them work hard on promoting the, the social science and arts and humanities agendas in, these, in this space. We have Guy Duke as our business champion and Charles Godfrey as our policy champion. And a very strong uh, team in knitting it all together in Anita, Jonathan and Val. And I just sort of sit in the middle and, you know, just sit in the middle really. <laughs> So I'd just like to quickly tell you about sort of 10 activities that we've been doing. <coughs> and you'll be familiar with, with many of these. The first is demystifying. And a number of you might have been involved with Eche, who led the first in the demystifying series, where we produced a booklet on de demystifying economic valuation. And I think this activity is very important because quite often we forget we are so familiar with certain concepts in our own particular discipline that this can be a real uh, barrier to interdisciplinary communication. <clears throat> the next in the series, um, which uh, it, it, we have a, a lead in Rebecca Lovell, who's connected to our programme advisory group, is actually going to be kicked off at the annual conference, so keep your eyes open for that. And that's on demystifying health metrics. And we have other um, ideas in the pipeline. The second thing we do is to get out and about. Now, we didn't have a public engagement, really, as one of, the, uh, one of our kind of terms of reference, but an opportunity presented itself when NERC put on a big event, Into the Blue, and Anita and Val um, and Jonathan created a fantastic um, sort of little piece of nature inside the aircraft hangar in which this event was held. We also get out and about um, at other conferences um, to try and foster interest in this interdisciplinary area. <coughs> um, we also hop. So we've had two rounds now uh, of our discipline hopping scheme uh, where we have open calls for people to apply to uh, change where they change their environment for three, around three months and sit in a completely different context working on an issue on the valuing nature agenda. So that could be hopping disciplines from ecology to social science, or it could be hopping into a completely different context, for example, going to work with Cornwall Council or uh, NGOs like Social Life. And we've just actually uh, awarded our third round um, of uh, placements. 
And so, you know, we've actually gained one extra money from NERC to, to kind of foster this activity. And um, if you go to our website, you will see uh, kind of interviews with those placement candidates talking about their experiences. And the emphasis here is very much on the learning experience, but nevertheless, a number of really interesting outputs have also been generated. Um, we have here, for example, um, a policy note from uh, a discipline hop into, um, into oh, English heritage. I forget, yes, yeah, something, yeah, English heritage, I think that was. Um, but there are a number of other outputs, including policy and practice notes, academic publications, and there have been um, you know, many other follow-on activities from some of those placements. We also act as a hub, so visit our website, join um, the Valuing Nature Network. We have over 1,800 members now, about 3,600 on, on Twitter. Please tweet during the conference. Front page, um, there's the tag for tweeting, so, so please feel, feel free to do that. But we also act as a hub for uh, liaising with Knowledge Exchange Fellows, and there are two or three in, in this area, including Alastair Scott, who's in the conference today. We engage with business. Guy Duke uh, uh, leads in this activity. We have a business interest group where we have a number of businesses who give freely of their time um, to discuss the research agenda with us and identify business interests and risks uh, we produce uh, um, notes on that linked to the funding calls that we, we have run. And we're also making links, helping make links with different research projects. And we also <laughs> gain some extra money to run business impact schools. And we've run one in London, and there's shortly to be another one in Edinburgh. Two in London, sorry, and there's shortly to be another one in Edinburgh. And again, people from business are giving freely of their time to talk to early career researchers, you have to apply um, uh, for a place, and it's quite competitive. We have two days of, um, kind of workshop type talks, and then we have a, a kind of day in the field. For example, going to Windsor Great Park to understand how natural capital accounting works in practice. <coughs> and we are also now pursuing. Um, some extra money to do business impact brokering, which is much more focused, sort of working with projects to enhance and facilitate their business impact. Michael Winter is leading a debate series, a, a lecture series. And we have here some examples of uh, three of the lectures that have been held. And this is really trying to move around the country and uh, you know, foster discourse around valuing nature issues. We also um, facilitate cross-training. We held uh, an event in partnership with the University of Kent, which was led by Rob Fish, <coughs> which is really kind of discussing participatory decision-making techniques um, in the context of valuing nature. And it was proved so popular that we, there was a follow-up event at the uh, Best Final Symposium last April. There are other, also other examples where Mark Reed, one of our PIs, has run a session on impact training um, for other projects. So we're very keen if there are any areas where we have expertise within the projects and they feel that they could um, hold training sessions across the program, we're very keen to sort of support and facilitate that. And we facilitate, as well, um, a range of events um, with other organisations. For example, we've held a joint seminar with Historic England <coughs> on the historic environment, valuing nature and ecosystem services. We have something coming up in the National Gallery where we're looking at the role of arts in landscape and environmental research. <coughs> And we also had a joint workshop with an EPSERC network called Recover, uh, where we were really discussing the theory and methods of tipping points and how they could be perhaps usefully applied 
to ecosystem services. And I'll probably talk a little bit more about that in the tipping point session we have this afternoon. And we reach into policy and practice. The, the, the lead here is, is Charles Godfrey. We've held an event with the Ecosystems Knowledge Network and the Centre for Sustainable Health Care. We've also held meetings in Nobel House, who are interested, very interested in the Tipping Points projects. And Louise Heathwaite has recently very kindly taken on the chair of our programme advisory group. And we're looking forward to her ideas for how we can uh, have more impact both at Westminster and Scottish and Welsh <coughs> governments, and with Scottish and Welsh governments. And finally, we see, see ourselves as being the glue, really. We hold annual project meetings. Uh, we discuss with the projects uh, progress and obstacles and what we can actually do to help them. And we hold this annual conference, and we try to make it a different sort of annual conference to really emphasize its interdisciplinary nature. So you'll see on the program there are a number of different types of activities, interactive sessions, demos, films, as well as um, presentations. So finally, we are also interested in thinking about uh, the future research agenda. Uh, as you can see, I've presented Valuing Nature in the context of other research programs that are complementary in this space. But looking forwards, um, we feel that uh, you know, the themes and the understanding that's, development, that's developing from these research programs has much to contribute as we work towards the Sustainable Development Goals. So in that context, I'm absolutely delighted that we have um, our next speaker, who's going to be Georgina Mace, who's going to give, her, give us her thoughts on this. Thank you, Georgina.